Donald Trump stormed out of Manhattan courtroom after he was called to the witness stand and reprimanded by a judge for violating a gag order, and yet Trump's legal woes have not tempered the Republican Party's ongoing devotion to him, as evidenced by their latest choice for Speaker Mike Johnson, a right-wing hardliner who helped engineer Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> we are all used to the screaming, blustery Trump. We see at rallies constantly ranting about everything from windmills killing birds and whales to toilets that don't flush to various celebrities who either are or are not nasty to him. That Trump is everywhere, and it gets dumber every day. Like on Monday, at a rally in New Hampshire when he claimed to have had an epiphany. I'm for us. I'm for us. You know how you spell us, right? You spell us, U.S. I just picked that up. Has anyone ever thought of that? I just picked that up. A couple of days I'm reading, and it said us. And I said, you know, if you think about it, us equals U.S. Yoga. So the bad news is the Republican frontrunner for the 2024 presidential nomination is out here designing pillows for TJ Maxx. <laughs> the dude is dumb as dumb rocks, but the good news is he would crush a two-letter word spelling bee. <laughs> Your word is me. Can you use it in a sentence, please? You have got to be <laughs> kidding me. If I had come home from school as a seven-year-old and told my parents, did you know us is spelled U and S? My parents would have immediately called the school and said, I think we need to make the curriculum a little more challenging. <laughs> well, my dad would have. My mom would have called me a genius and baked me a cake. But here's, <laughs> here's what's least believable about that clip. A Couple of days I'm reading and it said us. No, you weren't reading. <laughs> You don't read. You know how I know you don't read? If you did, you wouldn't have discovered at age 77 <laughs> that us is spelled with a U and an S. I mean, what would you have been reading anyway that would have spurred such an epiphany? Chicka chicka boom boom? <laughs> a, a told B and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree, but it's too late. It's too, I already chopped down the tree. <laughs> and I replaced it with a Trump resort. There won't be any trees that... There will be plenty of coconuts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that kid shaking his head, no, he doesn't know what I mean. <laughs> so that's the blustery, unhinged public Trump. But then there's the Trump you don't get to see, and that's the Trump who only exists when he's under oath. And when he's under oath, he's under penalty of perjury. He's suddenly much calmer, he's more restrained. You could even say sheepish. Here, he is, for example, in a deposition from 2016 related to a restaurant that pulled out of his D.C. hotel. Good morning, Mr. Trump, and again, thank you, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, would you state your full name for the record, please? Donald John Trump. And I imagine you've had your deposition taken a number I of have, times. yes. So you know the drill. And I, I do. Won't waste anyone's time going through it. Good, thank but you. Do know that if you need to take a break, I'm happy to let you in. Very good, break. thank you. My understanding is that you signed this lease. And if you look at that's, page... Well, that's true. Okay. You asked me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I did... I believe I signed the lease. Okay. But he came in and said, we're signing the lease. So he said, we've, I'll change we're it. signing yes. it. Because and... I, I think I signed it. Yeah, that's my signature, yes. Yes, that's, that's my name. <laughs> and in fact, I'm just picking this up now. D and O together spells do. So really, my name should be Donald. <laughs> if, if, you think, if you think about that. That footage is amazing. It's like watching the neighborhood Rottweiler, who's always terrorizing the mailman, suddenly mope around in a cone. <laughs> like, in public, he's a raving lunatic, screaming <laughs> like radical woke Democrats are using windmills and secret satellites to kill Christmas. And then under oath, he's practically Emily Post. Thank you. No, thank you very much. I would, I would love to read some incriminating documents. Thank you. <laughs> Because that's the only place Trump faces consequences. That's the one way you can still punish Trump, make him sit down in a courtroom and answer questions under oath with his tail between his legs. And that's what happened yesterday when the judge in his civil fraud trial hauled him up to the witness stand to reprimand him for violating a gag order that bars Trump from attacking court staff. Donald Trump taking the stand today in his civil fraud trial in New York after being ordered by the judge to testify about comments he made regarding a court clerk. Trump claimed that he wasn't talking about the person sitting next to the judge. He was actually talking about Michael Cohen. 
but the time was in the middle of his second day of testimony, not the clerk. Judging Goron was not buying it, not for a nanosecond, and he swiftly fined Donald Trump $10,000 and rebuked Trump. So Trump was ordered to take the stand and explain himself, and then the judge said, I don't believe you, and reprimanded him. I can only imagine what that looked like. He was probably like a middle schooler who refuses to look his parent in the eye after cursing them out. What did you just say? Nothing. Tell me what you said. I said, F you. Look at me when you say it. I said, F you, okay? It's not a curse word. I was talking about my favorite band, the Foo Fighters. I was reading, and I just picked that up. In fact, we don't have video or photos of this historic moment, but we do have a courtroom sketch, and it's amazing. Even in a courtroom sketch, Trump is making a face like he just realized he's in trouble. Mouth slightly open, looking at the judge like, uh. <laughs> also, whoever drew this did Trump some huge favors, because this looks like a New Yorker cartoon, where in reality, he's much more of a Kathy. <laughs> and then, like a pissy teenager, Trump made things even more dramatic by storming out of the courtroom less than an hour later. This was a dramatic turn of events, Lester. Former President Trump stormed out of a Manhattan courtroom after a tense day after the judge refused his attorney's request to dismiss the case. Michael Cohen did resume testifying, but Trump didn't stick around to hear him finish. The disgraced ex-president storming out of the courtroom with Secret Service agents left to chase after him. Okay, chase seems like a strong word. <laughs> they chased him the way you chase your pet turtle in the yard. He's going that way. <laughs> I'm sure Secret Service didn't have to run too hard. They probably saw him take off and said, he's on the move. Should we finish this game of Monopoly and then go catch up? <laughs> but we haven't even started. We'll be fine. We're talking about a guy who moves slower than a zombie after a giant bong rip. You know what's a funny word? Brains. <laughs> And then just to give you an idea of how defeated Trump was after all that, when he left the courtroom, he gave the press a one-sentence answer and walked away. The witness just admitted that we won the trial, and the judge should end this trial immediately. Thank you. Oof, that wasn't even one of his good lies. That the witness, Michael Cohen, admitted Trump won the trial? You know there are transcripts, right? That lady isn't writing in her diary. Trump having to take the stand and actually talk to the judge clearly spun him out. The witness said we won, and the judge agreed and apologized for the whole deal, and I'm so <laughs> you guys. I'm so <laughs> They made me sit next to the judge. <laughs> that can't be good, right? <laughs> and yet the Republican Party, nonetheless, remains in thrall to a man who just got scolded by a judge in a courtroom during a fraud trial, as evidenced by the fact that they just elected a guy named Mike Johnson from Louisiana as their new speaker. Johnson isn't just an election denier. He was, according to the New York Times, the most important architect of the Electoral College objections on January 6th. And he's not just a guy who thinks there was election fraud, which would be wrong on its own. He parroted the most bad, crazy conspiracy theories you can imagine. Remember Trump's ex-lawyer, Sidney Powell, who just flipped on him in Georgia? Remember how she didn't just say the usual GOP stuff like mail voting isn't secure, but went way off the deep end and claimed the Dominion voting software was rigged by the dead Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez? The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, were created in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election. Now, we have played this clip a few times lately because Powell just pleaded guilty in Georgia, and every time it's impossible not to be distracted by Rudy Giuliani behind her, <laughs> sweating profusely and trying to unscrew the cap from a tiny water bottle like it has the antidote inside. I think he's sweating because he can't open the water bottle. Like, it's slowly dawning on him that if he can't get the cap off a Fiji bottle, he might not be a good lawyer. <laughs> oh, boy, this is a bad sign. <laughs> but when it's my turn at the mic, I'm gonna blow them away, or oh, my name's not Ruby Gugliotta. <laughs> anyway, that was the insane conspiracy theory that, among other things, Fox News had to pay nearly $800 million for in a defamation suit. And yet, Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the House, actually thought those claims had merit. And he said in a radio interview at the time. The allegations about these, these voting machines, some of them being rigged with this software by Dominion. Look, there's a lot of merit to that. And when the president says the election is rigged, 
that's what he's talking about, that it was the fix was in. In every election in American history, there's some small element of fraud, irregularity, error. We, we just know that. You just accept that that's the case. But when you have it on a broad scale, when you have you know a software system that is used all around the country that is suspect because it came from Hugo Chavez's Venezuela. Now, I'll tell you another thing. I agree with Rudy. Those water bottles are hard to open. That's how nut this guy is. He's just as crazy as Trump. It's just a style difference. Trump is Jigsaw and Johnson is Dexter. <laughs> he agreed with the lunatic who just pleaded guilty to crimes in Georgia and repeated talking points that caused Fox News to pay out $800 million to settle a defamation case. He just says stuff in a normal, mild-mannered, moderate voice the Republicans think will make him easier to stomach. He's the kind of guy who would curse you out, but instead of saying the words, you <laughs> he'd say, U.S. Didn't see it coming. Didn't see it coming. This has been a closer look.